Good morning, everyone. It certainly is great to see so many of our local leaders here today for this very significant announcement. My name is Pam Parsons, Minister Responsible for Women and Gender Equality, and it certainly is an absolute pleasure to be joined by the Honorable John Hogan, Minister of Justice and Public Safety and Attorney General, and Malin Enstrom, Executive Director of Iris Kirby House. Our government remains steadfast in its commitment in working in partnership with Indigenous governments and organizations, people with lived experience, community agencies and stakeholders to ensure supports are in place for people who have been impacted by gender-based violence. Newfoundland and Labrador recently concluded negotiations with the federal government on a four-year bilateral funding agreement for this province to support the implementation of the National Action Plan to End Gender-Based Violence. Details regarding this multi-million dollar funding agreement will be announced in partnership with the federal government in the coming weeks. As Minister Responsible for Women and Gender Equality, I want to unequivocally state that violence of any kind will not be tolerated in this province. And I'm so pleased to be part of this initiative being announced today that will increase the safety and for all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. I would now like to invite Minister Hogan to come forward to share the announcement. Minister Hogan. Thank you, Minister Parsons. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be here today for this announcement and to be supported by representatives from numerous stakeholders throughout the province. I do, before I start on the announcement, I do want to thank Jim Crockwell for hosting us here at McMoran today. Uh, he's such a great community leader, especially in this part of the province, this part of the city. Uh, he's always been great to us uh, and really want to thank him for opening up his doors here today and providing the coffee and donuts. Interpersonal, viol interpersonal violence in this province and in this country has been unfortunately trending upwards for several years. And that is only what is reported to police. Based on data from 2017, the RNC received over 1,500 intimate partner violence referrals a year. So far in 2023, there have been almost 1,700. Our government believes people at risk have a right to know if their partners have histories of violence or abuse. We know more can be done to protect individuals so they can make informed decisions about their safety. And today, I'm so pleased to announce the Interpersonal Violence Disclosure Protocol Act, or more commonly known as Claire's Law. It is now in force. Applications can be made online through www.gov.nl.ca slash Claire's Law, or in person at your nearest police station. What this law does is allow those feeling unsafe in an intimate partner relationship to receive information from the police about their risk of experiencing violence. It legalizes who can make a request for information, what can be disclosed, and how that information will be protected once it is disclosed. By proclaiming Claire's Law today, its regulations and protocol are now in force, and Newfoundland and Labrador is the third province in Canada to enact this type of important violence prevention tool. Claire's Law is meant to support those at risk of intimate partner violence while balancing the right to privacy. It is a proactive tool that provides applicants the right to ask and the right to know. The right to ask means an individual can request to find out about their risk of experiencing interper interpersonal violence. The right to know is when the police will proactively disclose information to an individual who is at risk of intimate partner violence. I can tell you that significant due diligence was taken to help determine how this protocol would be applied in our provincial context. Designing a law and protocol to support people in vulnerable and sometimes life-threatening situations is a process that should never be rushed. And we spent considerable time and resources consulting with other jurisdiction, jurisdictions, engaging our police forces, and working with stakeholder groups to find the appropriate balance. Safety is the ultimate goal, and those involved in this process need to know their personal information will be protected. Applicants can also designate a support person to act on their behalf or to accompany them in meetings with law enforcement officials. The process first took shape in 2019 and officials in Justice and Public Safety in consultation with the RNC, the RCMP and other stakeholders such as the Office of Women and Gender Equality, Violence Prevention, Prevention Groups and Women's Advocates worked diligently to make this law a reality. 
Thank you to the staff, specifically Charlene Simmons and Ellen Haskell, who are dedicated to this file and to our police services who will administrate this program. I can assure you they are making a difference in the lives of the individuals that we serve. I also acknowledge Minister Andrew Parsons, who during his time as Justice Minister really pushed for this protocol to happen and indeed got the ball rolling within the Department of Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, Claire's Law is not going to solve the problem of intimate partner violence, but it will empower those at risk to have this extra piece of information to help them feel safe. For survivors of intimate partner violence, the experience can be especially life-altering and the impact profound. The hope is that tools like Claire's Law will help us deal with an issue before it even begins. I encourage those at risk of experiencing intimate partner violence to go to gov.nl.ca slash Claire's Law for more information and if, immediate, if in immediate danger, always dial 911. Again, as a government, we remain committed to making Newfoundland and Labrador a safe place for everyone. Thank you everyone for coming this morning. Thank you, Minister Hogan. And of course, thanks to Minister Parsons as well. I know how passionate he has been about this and working with him on this over the years. By preparing to proclaim into force the Interpersonal Violence Disclosure Protocol, or Claire's Law, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador is increasing the safety for individuals in intimate relationships who are at risk of violence from their partners. Claire's Law is named after Claire Wood, a British woman who was murdered by a former partner in 2009. And I know just by looking around the room here, we have people who have who've been on a very similar journey and who have been great advocates. The Woods family fought for a dis disclosure protocol that would enable individuals to obtain information from police about a partner's documented history of violence in hopes that they may safely leave relationships when a risk of violence may be present. As Minister Hogan highlighted, our province will become the third jurisdiction in Canada to implement Claire's Law. To talk about the impact the protocol will have on our province, please welcome Malin Enstrom to the podium. Thank you, Minister Parsons and Minister Hogan. Um, Claire's Law is a revolutionary piece of legislation that empowers individuals to take control of their safety and well-being. It allows people to inquire about their partner's or potential partner's history of abusive behavior. This crucial information can be the difference between life and death in cases of intimate partner violence. Intimate partner violence is a pervasive issue that transcends boundaries of age, gender, and socioeconomic status. It often remains hidden behind closed doors, shrouded in secrecy and fear, often leaving victims isolated and unable to seek help. Claire's Law seeks to change this by enabling individuals to access information about their partner's criminal record, if any, related to violence or abuse. Not only does this law empower potential victims, but it, also, it is also holding perpetrators accountable for their past actions. Claire's Law contributes to breaking the cycle of violence and fostering safer communities. It also raises awareness about the importance of healthy relationships. It encourages open conversation and underscores the significance of trust, respect, and communication within partnerships. This law serves as a reminder that love should never involve fear or violence. It is also vital to recognize, however, that the legislation alone is not enough. We must also support victims and survivors, offering them the resources and assistance needed to escape dangerous situations. It is a collective responsibility to create a society where intimate partner violence is not tolerated. Claire's Law is not just a piece of legislation. It is a symbol of our commitment to safeguarding the well-being of women and their children. By providing individuals with the assistance needed to get out of a potential dangerous situation, we are fostering an environment where intimate partner violence is condemned, and we take significant steps towards a safer and more compassionate society. Thank you. Thank you, Milan, and thank you to everyone for joining us here today. And as Minister Hogan said, 
This is just another tool that our government has developed to address violence against women and gender diverse individuals.